This guy, Pastor Stephen Anderson of the Faithful Word Baptist Church in Phoenix, Arizona, made headlines in 2009 because he said that he prays for President Obama to die every night. Just like Jesus would do. I'm sure Jesus is somewhere right now hoping for the same thing. Why can't that damn president of America just croak already? Why, why the fuck can't that happen? That's what Jesus does. Well, now this guy's in the news again for being the most blatant sexist in human history. When the preaching of God's word is taking place, it, first of all, it's not for a woman to be doing the preaching. And second of all, it's not for women to be speaking. Even, the Bible's really clear on this, even if they were to have a question, it, they, they're not to ask that question in the church, number one. And number two, even if they want to ask that question to their husband, they should wait until they get home. You know, they should not in the service be talking. And by the way, this is why I don't believe that women should say amen during the preaching either. Now, here's the thing. When, when the preaching is going on, women should not express their opinion about the sermon, even if it's a positive opinion. And of course, the heart is in the right place. Now, I did one time, I was preaching one time, and a woman actually disagreed with me in the middle of my preaching. You know, I, I said something and she said I was wrong. You know, and I, I kind of, you know, blew up a little bit. But anyway, uh, but you know, a, a lot, there could be times when a woman's just agreeing. And, and you know what? The heart's in the right place, of course. But in reality, if we're going to be true to Scripture, then basically we would say, okay, when it's time for learning, that's a time for women to keep silent. There are always so many ironies when people like this talk. One of the things that stuck out to me was, remember when we spoke about uh, the KKK, the new KKK uh, on Friday? And I said, the biggest irony about the KKK is that these are guys that are preaching that white people are superior as they are trotting around, you know, blowing farts, drinking tremendous amounts of beer, speaking broken English because they don't have proper grammar and none of them even graduated high school. You know, they all have low IQ points. They're all drooling on their white dresses that they wore for this goofy ceremony where they burn a cross. They're totally uh, misinterpreting the message of Jesus, who is supposedly their God. Jesus talked about loving everybody, and these guys are doing nothing but doing the opposite. They're preaching hate nonstop. So the irony is, as these guys are preaching white superiority, they are the living evidence and the living proof that oftentimes white people can be inferior. Same thing going on with this guy here. As he's essentially preaching that women should know their place, they're basically property, shut the fuck up when a man is talking, how dare you even ask a question, don't even say amen in church when all the men are saying, amen, pastor, don't say anything, shut the fuck up, know your place, ask later, okay, don't give me lip, don't talk back, he even says, he's like, yeah, some, a woman tried to respond to me and disagree, <laughs> could you imagine a woman disagreeing with a man, how ridiculous is that? And all the while, he's essentially preaching male superiority and women need to know their place. He's proving that oftentimes there are many men who are just flat out inferior to women. This guy is exhibit A. When your ideology doesn't line up with the facts, when your ideology doesn't line up with reality, when you are essentially making shit up, that's inferior. That's an inferior belief system because anybody could do that. That's not hard. That's not difficult. To go up there and claim, I'm superior, my gender is right, and your gender is wrong. Well, to do that is an intellectual cop-out. So, again, as you're trying to say men are superior, you're proving that oftentimes men are inferior. It's amazing to me that they don't get it. They don't get it, but that's the point. Uh, you know, would a guy like that ever get it? I don't think he would, because he's a myopic idiot. These are people who, they can't stop for a second and be objective and think about the world outside of their own two eyes. You know, they never thought, well, what if I was in that position? They never thought that because they're not smart enough to do it. And, I mean, look at what he's saying there. Women shouldn't preach, of course. Uh, women shouldn't speak in church. Wait to talk to your husband even. Don't say amen. I mean, it, women, this is what they think of you on the right. I just want to let you know that. In fundamentalist religious crowds and on the far right wing of the political spectrum, you are property. 
to those kinds of people, there's a place for everything and everything in its place. The man's job is to be the provider and to go out and earn the money, and the woman's job is to cook the meals and raise the kids and blow the husband and shut the fuck up. Don't talk so much, bitch. Is that the kind of life you want to live? Look, I got no problem if, if you choose to do that. By all means, go right ahead. I'm in favor of freedom of choice. You live your life however you want to live it. But the idea that these guys have that, no, no, that's it. That's the end of the conversation. That is all we are going to allow you to do. And if you deviate from that, there's something wrong with you. That idea, which he's, uh, he's perpetrating here, is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. You know, and when I hear things like this, I think if I was a woman, oh my God, would I put my middle finger up to society and I would go out and, you know, do something that is 100% associated with a male role just to spite douchebag morons like this who are so convinced you can't be happy and deviate from this mold that I've laid out for you in society. Fuck that, man. I would do the opposite. But also, the last thing I'll say here is, even with how much I despise this clown, he is right according to, to the Bible. So the Bible actually is quite sexist. It's also quite racist. It's also quite stupid. It also makes, you know, claims to fact that are not fact at all. In fact, we know we could prove that they're false now. For example, the uh, multiple areas where they allude to the earth being flat. You know, that's incorrect. We know that's incorrect. So since that's the case, isn't this just a great example of why we should just scrap the book? <laughs> like, just don't believe it anyway because it's stupid. Don't get me wrong. There are parts of the Bible, a lot of parts of the New Testament, where, again, Jesus' mentality is take care of people, love people, care for people, look after the poor. And that stuff's all fine and good. But I don't like it when people act like, you know, well, it's not true religion when you're a, a, a douchebag like this guy. Because, no, he actually cited literal Bible, Bible verses in his speech here. I, I cut it out, but he was mentioning them. He said, look, in this part it says this, in that part it says that. So you can't get mad at him for reading the book and saying, hey, this is, this is how uh, I'm going to live my life. So the thing is, we, we should disagree based on the premise. Not just like, oh, you're not doing what is truly religious and what is truly Christian. No, because the Bible, that's the point. The Bible and any holy book can be used to justify any ideology. So instead of arguing it on their grounds, on the religious grounds, just nip it in the bud and disagree with the premise of it. Say, oh, really? That, you base you, your life philosophy off of that ridiculous text? which has seven-headed dragons and talking snakes and people living to the age of 900? Well, that's weird. You must not be too bright. 